Hola chicos, ¿cómo están? Hello. Okay guys, we are back with a new episode of Station 19. I think this episode, for what I see, there's going to be the, the counselor or therapist. I'm not sure what she is. She's coming back, which I love because she was amazing in the last episode she was in. So I'm glad that we have her back. I suppose that we're gonna be touching what the last episode was left with, with making allusion to the murder of George Floyd. After the station episode, I watched the Grace episode and they touched a lot what was the protests. So I suppose that's gonna kinda be here as well. So I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. I can wait to see them talking to the counselor and see what they have to say and express about this whole situation. So I'm just very excited to see what's gonna happen. So I don't wanna talk too much and just get down to the episode. So let's do it guys, let's go. Don't worry, I got a rapid test this morning. So what is, I asked her to come. There's been a death and you are all grieving. So I asked her to come. There are not many fire captains who would treat a moment of national crisis like an internal tragedy. And your captain is. I respect it. So I'm honored to be here to help however I can. Yeah, it's good to talk about it. I don't need you to talk about Mr. Floyd. It's good to kind of dis to kind of discharge everything you're feeling about this national situation. Because they are angry. They are angry. Yeah. You're bold and you're trying. Right or wrong, you tried something today. You tried something to help. Thank you. Yeah. I love you. Oh my god, I love you. Okay, please. I'm sorry. Parenthesis, how good does Karina look right here? Oh my god. Like, okay. I look for perfection in my dictionary, and Stefania is right under the world. The word. I mean, oh my god, she looks amazing. The, 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 the hair, the, the everything. Sorry, I just had to point that out. I apologize, but uh, she's she's. Uh, how is she this beautiful? Okay, sorry. They are adorable. They love each other. They are adorable. Okay, let's focus. Sorry. I saw what happened to Dean Miller. You saw the police department. It makes me uncomfortable because <laughs> when the police made me lie down on the street like an animal during a routine traffic stop, you didn't sue. I didn't do much of anything at all. I feel like a hypocrite. A hypocrite? Yeah. I have two kids. Young black men don't get to behave any old way they want when dealing with the police. I yelled at that officer as he got into his car. I mean, if our boys had yelled at a cop like that, I... would be upset with them? Well, hell yes, I'd be upset. I'd... Because you want to protect them more. I'd also be proud. And you... Because they'd be right. Yeah, totally. Well, I was right. But Miller, you don't want anything to right, happen to them. You can't do that. You can't yell at a cop because... You, because I've got a gun. And I tell them to de-escalate. I, I tell them that in any confrontational situation, their job is to de-escalate, but it should be the cop's job. You're right. Yeah. It should. You're mad at yourself that you didn't do more after that cop treated you that way. And you're mad at yourself that you didn't do less after that cop treated you that way. Because Miller's doing more. And because you want your boys to do less. The news that a man has been killed in the street reminds me that I have to be careful and, and it steals all of my mental and emotional energy that I should be giving to my wife and my kids and my health. Is totally. something going on with her health? What? But is he sick? Because I know he's been talking to Bailey about something. So maybe he's sick? What's Seattle happening? Should we go? Can we? I mean, after shift? No, still, can we? Oh, you mean because we're FD. Well, it's a free country, so... Why can't you go? In theory. You're, yeah, you're the first responder, but... In the process, you're considered anti-police. Because <laughs> asking for our right to live is inherently anti-police, and nobody seems to realize that's the problem. Why can't you go? That's just stupid if you can't go, because you're a firefighter. Like... This fire is beneath our feet. It's built into every foundation, our history, language news coverage it's everywhere i mean we and growing up we were taught about black history and the civil rights movement we were taught to believe that they had beat it and i think okay that they don't i mean at least in my country they don't teach you about this 
they teach us about the abolishment of slavery in the United States, but I don't remember no one ever teaching me about the ab abolishment of slavery in my own country. Like, I don't remember anyone telling me about that. Of course, we know about uh, Afro-Uruguayan culture and how slavery affected the culture. And we have so many uh, cultural things that are patrimony because of the Afro-Uruguayan community, but they don't teach you much about it in history. It is like a whiteout of history. I don't think they teach you much. They don't teach you much about it. It's like they just teach you about the colonies and the Europeans coming to the, the whole American continent and, and bringing African slaves and killing the natives and they teach you about that but it's just basic and then it's just let's move on to another thing so I don't know I don't think they teach you much at school they should teach you more I don't know what you guys think about it or how it is in your respective countries but I think they teach, they teach you very less about diversity like very less very little about uh, diversity honestly when I was a child, and I learned about the Native American genocide, I pictured one small village, one small village of men with feathers in their hair who gave the white people turkey and then got mad that they wouldn't leave. Now, I pictured it because those were the literal pictures in my history books. And even though I knew that my people had been stolen from their homes and brought here chained up on ships, somehow I believed that textbook. I was 35 years old when I learned that in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and in the wake of that, millions upon millions of people who had been living here for 15,000 years were extinguished. Yes. And the ones who survived. Here, a little history. <laughs> um, in my country, after, I think it was after the first president of, when Uruguay became a country, the first president of Uruguay, um, he killed all the natives, all the charruas, and it was a genocide. He killed them all. And then the ones that were left, that were just a few, they were taken to France as a, as a, like an exposition. And they were putting cages as animals to show the Native Americans not being civil. But they were inside a cage, like in a zoo. You don't see natives. And no one that is native here. It's very hard to find someone that comes from a native uh, Charrua ancestry. So I think I'm talking too much, but I think it's so important what she's saying because this is history, guys, and it's it's real. It's real in the whole American continent. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Let's keep watching this. We learn when we learn. And the shame we feel at having taken so long to learn, that can be useful as long as we use it well. Once we know better, we have to do better. Yeah, totally. I think we're all still learning so much about this world. The things that when I was 13, people didn't teach I ran at school. Cross -country and track. The and during now. the off season, I mean, I have the power to call out injustices when I see them. I have the power to make sure that everyone can breathe. I'm loving this episode already and I, I think this episode is going to be very long and my reaction is going to be very long so I apologize about it because I love putting these lines there like I, I like people like watching this this again so this is probably going to be very long so I'm sorry but I really love uh, all the lines that they are saying so yeah I'm sorry <laughs> if this is too long it's all over the world almost makes you uh, hopeful. We stand in support of our communities no matter their color. This little play act has been on loop for half an hour now. And these stations are eating it up like he's some shining example of P.D. Malak. As far as any question about where this department stands on the issue of black lives. I know this little earthworm is not going to. Mm. Oh. That is why every time I wonder whether to continue with the lawsuit, whether it's too much too little to it's something at least some way to fight against this this performative uh, uh hypocritical destructive yeah 